Today we're going to be talking about the Liat 5.5 Body Protector Pro and my options for body armor on my next ADV trip. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. As I said, today we're gonna to be talking about my transition from integrated body armor inside the jacket type of stuff that we're all used to over to wearable body armor and what the pros and cons are of making that decision. First off, let me get a little terminology out of the way. When I say body armor in this video, I'm talking about the Liat body armor that you wear on your body, actual mesh shirt type of thing that you wear versus integrated body armor, which would be the jacket from Climb or Scorpion or Revit, any of those other systems that we use out there. That'll be the distinction between body armor and integrated systems. To get started, let's take a look at the Liat 5.5 body protector. So this has a zipper that goes up the side along with protection that goes about as completely around your body as is possible. There is back protection, front protection, there is shoulders and elbows. All of that is taken care of with this system. Now there are some options for different types of armor that obviously are a little bit less extensive. but. As you'll hear later in the video, the reason why I got this is because I plan on utilizing this as my go-to armor on the road or off-road, anything that I'll be doing. So I need full protection. Now, getting into this is a little bit difficult, especially compared to a jacket, obviously, because you're completely locked up in here. The sort of thing you probably wouldn't want to do multiple times in a day. I'm sure you can get better at it. I, I hope I do. Uh, but for getting in, this is about this is about as difficult as I'd really want it to get. So the zipper comes up the side so that you don't have anything running against, you know, like your chest bone or or anything that's going to be uh, in an impact or abrasion area. When you get to the top, there's this little piece of nylon that goes over top of the zipper so it's not rubbing up against your neck. Basically, the whole thing is just a really solid mesh suit that holds all your pads where they belong on your body. Now, I'm going to run through the entire thing top to bottom. So you get a handle on, on what is here, what isn't here, and, and how it's working. So we'll start with the chest. The chest protection has this piece right up here. If you've seen any of the other videos about the Liat uh, Body Protector Pro, they talk about how this actually holds the neck brace, if you have a, a supplemental neck brace in there. And you can push it down so that it's not sticking out so far if you don't have a neck brace added. I've got mine up right now because I don't really care. Uh, for the body protection, you've got uh, essentially plastic that comes all the way down. And then you've got your side panels that come in that take care of kind of your rib protection on the side, as well as buckle in to keep the whole system together. Underneath that, you have a cummerbund type belt that just kind of hopes, helps to support the entire system keep everything on tight and firm and, and, and where it belongs, 
Uh, you can detach that from the back. There are uh, Velcro spots back here. So if you don't want the lap belt or the cummerbund, you can take that off and not use it at all. Uh, I like having it on there. It seems to make the whole thing just kind of feel a lot more tight on my body and, and where it belongs. But maybe through usage, I'll take it off. The mesh that you're using here is super, super stretchy. It's got a bunch of holes in it to kind of help you breathing. It's a, it's a light material, so there's not much to it. There's obviously holes in some areas as well, but it's a, it's a pretty light material. I feel like you'll, you'll cool off really easily in this. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like it'll hold a whole lot of moisture. It's kind of a nylon-y type material as well, so, but it does stretch a lot. Uh, my understanding is that as you go up in sizes, it doesn't really get any wider as much as it just gets longer. So uh, if you need to get this into your pants to be able to tuck in, make sure that you get a, a, a large size in there. The sleeves from the elbow down actually zipper off. You can take this completely off and have just a like kind of a short sleeve shirt type that has the uh, shoulders, chest and back available to you and takes off the elbows. I will probably always have the elbows on just because landing on an elbow seems like it would really really sting pretty bad so i will leave those on there is robust padding under e underneath each one of these plastic pieces so even when i press up against it i can't feel any of the plastic on the other side i just feel the padding from the inside so it's really nice they've got these really nice uh, velcro attachments here to also hold the pads where they belong so it's not rolling around on you um, even if it could in this super tight material on the back, you have a very similar setup to what you see on the front with the element here to put the neck brace into and then padding going all the way down. Again, pretty hard plastic everywhere. So if you do have some slide, I guess that'll take care of it. Anything that's super hard, obviously, this plastic will also deal with that really well. But for my money and for what I was looking for, I could not find a harder core set of armor that was on your body wearable that I could use for, for what I was looking for. So my path to this choice has been a little bit convoluted. The first time I saw wearable armor was in 2019 at Overland Expo when Moscow Moto was debuting their Basilisk line. And at that time, it didn't really seem to make a lot of sense to me. It seemed really difficult to get into and out of over and over again, which is the way that I typically rode when I was in an ADV environment. Plus, I had just bought my really great climb gear and couldn't fathom either dropping the money or changing over from what seemed like a pretty good system already. It was another year and a half before this idea came to my head again. I liked the idea of cooling down a little bit more in environments like what we were in in Utah, but the idea of jumping over to wearable body armor and just completely changing just didn't quite fit for me. As many of you know who watch this channel regularly, at the tail end of last year in October, I had an opportunity to train and shoot for DC Dirt Camp. You can see the hype video here that I did for one of their classes. And it became really apparent during that, that weekend that jumping off the bike and stripping out of my jacket and all this other stuff before I had an opportunity to shoot was a real big time waster, which you just can't do when you're out on the trail and trying to capture that perfect shot. Again, the wearable body armor got into my head and I started thinking a little bit more seriously about it. I considered our summer trip that we're gonna be taking this year through Kentucky and Tennessee. And I also started thinking about our Mexico and Central America trip that we're gonna be doing in 2023 and considering it might be really nice to be able to cool down and be able to operate on and off the bike with ease in a relatively comfortable wearable body armor set. Join that with the fact that I plan on making 2021 the year of training and getting out and shooting a bunch of training and taking a bunch of training, it seemed like wearable body armor might finally be in my wheelhouse. I started discussing the pros and cons of this idea with Kevin. You'll remember him as the guy who took the crash on our first day on our Mid-Atlantic BDR trip, and I figured he'd have some pretty good input about what he thought was good or bad as far as protection is concerned on a trip like this. So we went through some of the ideas and here's our list of the pros and cons that we came up with for wearable body armor versus integrated jacket systems that we're, we're all pretty used to. The first pro I was considering is that it's just less gear. Between the mesh of the body armor and the barely there fabric of the jersey, 
you should be able to flow a ton of air through this thing and really cool down no matter what environment you're in and really allow yourself the lightest, most capable protection while you're on the trail. The second pro is how all of the armor is very firm to your body between the elbow pads and the shoulder pads, chest and back. It's all basically just suction directly to you. So those pads are gonna stay in place in the event of a fall, as opposed to my jacket, which has a little bit more play with the armor. And I know it should be a little bit tighter, but there's just no way to make that as tight as a shirt that's suctioned to your body. That's gonna leave those pads in the right place in case you do take a fall. The third pro I'll talk about, and this deals a little bit with training and even trying to shoot our trips, is the time savings and being able to just jump off the bike and immediately be comfortable enough to shoot or film whatever I need to. Now, when I'm wearing my moto jacket and it's the hot summer months, it's really difficult to spend any time in that capacity, in the heat, without stroking out. It's just, it's extraordinarily hot, especially when you're not moving. So routinely what I would do is I'd jump off the bike, I'd take off the jacket, throw it down, grab all my stuff and start shooting or filming or doing whatever I was doing. My hope is with this, I'll be able to jump off the bike, grab my camera and immediately be filming without having to worry about taking anything off because it's so cool, it breathes so well, and I'm ready to go just operationally the minute I step off the bike. And now for a few of the cons of body armor. First off, it's always on. Now I know this sounds like a little bit of a contradiction given what I talked about on the pro side, but it's easy to take a jacket off when you stop for lunch or if you've got a longer break, you just unzip and wham, you're done. Getting in and out of body armor is a little bit more difficult, a little bit more finicky, it takes a little bit more time, and especially when you're wet, taking that stuff on and off is more difficult. So I think I'm probably more likely to stay in it no matter what my stop is, which means you're kind of committed from the time you get in it to the time you're finally getting out of it during the day, you're gonna stay in that gear, which means that while you're eating, while you're taking that longer break, you're still gonna be wearing that body armor, which definitely isn't as comfortable as wearing no jacket. The second one, and I'm hoping to never ever test this out, but it feels like with the body armor, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of your slide protection that you would get with integrated armor and a jacket. Now, and namely, this would be the places that aren't covered by the hard plastic. So the hard plastic is on the elbows, the shoulders, the front, and the back. But inside here on your wrists and your forearms and a little bit back on your tricep, there's really nothing other than the mesh fabric that holds all that stuff together, which on the road and any slide, you're gonna rip right through. So you're gonna be sacrificing some of that slide capability by wearing body armor as opposed to the integrated system. The third con, and again, I can't say this specifically because I haven't worn it, but I remember Utah and I remember sweating a little bit. Nope, I remember sweating a lot. And now that you're wearing a mesh shirt that has all your pads on it, your sweat is going through every inch of that. Everything that you sweat out is going through that shirt, as opposed to the jacket, which is a little bit off of you, and maybe you've got some garments on underneath, and air is flowing in between you and it, and this is right on your body. So I have to believe that sooner or later, especially over a multi-day trip, this thing is really gonna start stinking. And I'm sure there's ways to clean it, but it's not like you can just throw it in the washing machine and be done with it. There's, there's a little bit more care and, and difficulty in getting this clean as opposed to just washing down or spraying down the jacket, which probably doesn't get as bad as this item will. Number four on the con side, and this deals a little bit with the pro side also. I talked about how those pads are all held firmly in place, which means this shirt is super tight. All this stuff is really stuck to you, which makes it a little bit less comfortable. And, and I'm hoping it's a little bit like a, a boot, like a riding boot or any other boot that you would wear that as you get into it a little bit more, you get comfortable, it kind of breaks in with you and, and gets better, or you just get used to it. Right now, I'm not used to it, so it feels like I'm, I'm wearing a monkey on my back. It, it doesn't feel great right off the bat, but I'm hoping that all changes. I'm hoping it gets better. But either way, it couldn't possibly be more comfortable than my loose fitting, easy jacket other than on the temperature side. The fifth one, and this is one I hadn't really considered yet, but my main goal with this system is to stay cooler on the bike, but that can have an opposite side too, that maybe it's too cool. I mean, pushing air past your body at 60 miles an hour for a long day could knock 
everybody down. You know, that could take a lot out of you, especially between your, your water intake, between your, your temperature, that could really drop you almost into, you know, dangerous exposure levels. I don't, I don't know, I haven't done it. I don't know what this would be like in a lot of heat or even in semi heat. And if you get too cold riding like that, it would have to put on an outer layer. But that's a potential issue that I could run into here is that instead of swinging from the too hot side, I actually go too cold and any sort of sweat or water that's on me could be really, really terrible. The last con that I considered was that my jacket right now is Gore-Tex. So if I just happen to be riding through a squall, I'm covered pretty well. It's not going to, I mean, I'm still going to get wetness down the collar, through the sleeves and up through the bottom, but I'm not going to get drenched in the same way I would wearing this body armor. And again, when you're talking about temperature control, that could be an issue. If you're soaking wet and riding along in even 70 degree weather, that could get really cold really fast over a prolonged amount of time. So that water issue, and I know it can be solved by just having a rain jacket that you throw over, but right now I don't have to worry about that with my climb gear. So that's a consideration for when I wear this and how I would wear it if I'm ever gonna be running into rainstorms. So with all of that said, I really broke this down into a couple of different sliders or spectrums that we're gonna be on. As riders, we're all really good at risk assessment and kind of acknowledging that the risk that's out there may be worth it for whatever we're getting in return. And we kind of, we make those determinations each on an individual level. I mean, I know we all have riders that we know that, that ride without helmets or ride with less than great gloves or are willing to do that ride that we aren't or go faster or take that corner, or whatever. We all have our own rules that we have to live by and our own ride that we have to ride. When it comes to this, I think what I finally settled on is that I'm willing to sacrifice some of those protective elements to see if I might be able to cool down a little bit more and make it easier to shoot and film and get off the bike and do the things that I need to do in order to be able to do BDR videos and travel videos and training videos and all that sort of stuff. I wanna be able to get better at that and in order to do that, I'm probably going to have to sacrifice a little bit on the protection side. And now with the Liat 5.5, there is robust plastic and armor on there. Some of the body armors that you can find out there are just really like D3O foam type stuff on your body. So would provide very little slide protection on the road. They're made basically strictly for off-road. With Elliot, you get a little bit more capability of being on the road and having some slide protection there that was pretty robust even for, for body armor. And that's why I went that route because I do plan on traveling uh, on regular roads, highways, at high speeds in this body armor and recognizing that if I do come off the bike, I may have some serious road rash that I wouldn't otherwise get with the jacket. Now, as I said, I haven't had a chance to test any of this out. The Liat just arrived. My mindset on this is just sort of evolving. So if you stay tuned to the channel, you follow up with me a little bit, I'll tell you what ideas worked, what didn't, if my pros and cons list is accurate, and if this body armor actually ends up doing what I hope that it does, which making me freer and more comfortable off the bike to be able to do the things that I need to do to produce great videos. Now, if you're interested in this type of stuff, if you'd like to see motorcycle ADV, gear reviews, trip reviews, things like that, definitely subscribe to our channel. We do this stuff all the time. If you have any questions or comments for me, definitely leave that down in the comments. If you've used body protection or body armor before, leave that comment down. If you would never do it, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know where I'm wrong on this because again, I'm just sort of making this up as I go along. So your input would be really appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate every one of you here. We are closing in on a 6,000 mark for our subscribers, which is huge over just the last year. I can't thank you enough for, for coming out. If you wanna know a little bit more about Be Gone For Good, our mission, the things that you do for the community just by watching this video and commenting on it, check out right up here. I've got a whole thing about how your attention is helping people in the communities that we are riding through. Thank you again. This is Chad with Be Gone For Good. Remember, the adventure starts with you up here and in here. And I'll see you next time.